Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, as I always say. It's good to be with you. And it's always good to be with my very good colleagues, Phoebe Francis in Dubai. Hi, Phoebe. Good morning, Graham, and nice to be here with you as well as Mohamed. Yeah, and now, of course, let me introduce Mohamed Shukri. Everybody in the Middle East knows Mohamed. Good morning, Phoebe and Graham from Bahrain. <laughs> Good to be with you. So I'm going to throw this out to the panel, as they sometimes say, and say, maybe I'll ask Phoebe. Phoebe, what do you think we should talk about today? What can we share with our audience, our viewers, that will add value to them being with us during this time? What, what, what do you, give me an idea of what we think we, think we should talk about. Yeah, this this prompted me to reflect on, you know, how uh, I was developed and maybe how uh, leaders develop leaders can be our topic today for our conversation. Wow. Okay. Leaders developing leaders. Yeah. And that, that assumes that leaders should develop leaders. Yeah. And that assumes that leaders uh, do develop leaders, and and then the next is the habit. What do you think about that, Muhammad? Now, I mean, you summed it up when should and they they do uh, by definition a leader does uh, uh, develop leaders, and not only in his what he says or how he guides, but also in how he behaves. So totally, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So in the let me just pick up on what you said about how he or she behaves, because we know, in certainly in regard to the first, the most important uh, five practices of exemplary leadership, that leaders model the way, and that is what they're doing and how people are observing them, uh, in terms of others following learning from that those behaviors watching them and you know as i as i've said on one of my quotes that uh, if you're a leader you're being watched today and so what are people going to learn from what you do today because even though you may not be planning on doing something that is going to help or hinder someone you are, in fact, influencing others by your behaviour. Do you agree? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think uh, I, I'm, I'm reflecting on uh, my, my teachers in schools because, you know, how uh, we, we relate to them. We, we, we see them in a stage and we observe them very carefully what actions they are doing. And there are teachers who are touched touching our life like anything based on what they do, what they share with us. And that is early aspect when we observe from an uh, organizational setting. But when you come to uh, family also, you know, as parents, what are we doing? Yeah. And how are we interacting with our family members? These thoughts are coming to my mind. And uh, when you said, uh, uh, you know, leaders are observed, like we observe what our parents do. We observe what our... Uh, uh, people who are heading in departments do and observing them and their eyebrows, their facial expressions all have an impact on uh, uh, how people, uh, uh, what we call, make meaning in their <laughs> daily work life. And, uh, and those who are uh, listening, those who are um, guiding and those who are uh, giving that helping hand are always uh, respected, trusted in that process. So that is something which is coming to my mind right now. I'm going to pick up on a point that you that you made there, which I think is very relevant. It's about parenting and and what our children see. And we are three gentlemen who are blessed to have. Sorry, we are three parents who are blessed to have children. Uh, and. I know I'm going to make an admission here that some years ago, when my children were very much younger, there were there may have been something that I did that at the time I probably would rather have I have not done 
in front of my children. I can't remember anything specific at this point, or it might have been something that I said. And I'm sure you can relate to this, gentlemen, that a little bit later, maybe the next day, you see that child either say those words or do that behaviour that you wished you hadn't done or wished you hadn't shown them. And you go, oh, my gosh, <laughs> why did I say that? Because they're learning the good, but they're also learning the things that you'd rather they perhaps didn't learn at that early stage. Am I right? Yeah, they watch uh, very closely everything you say, and they will take this as a, a statement. Okay, Dad, uh, are we we are going to that restaurant, aren't we, Dad? Uh, and if you keep quiet, you know you cannot actually. Uh, which I wanted to add one thing to the Phoebe's list. Actually, our list of leaders, because being in safety, I often tell leaders this. You know, uh, the famous line uh, from the one minute manager, what you allow, you encourage, specifically in safety as leaders. So you not following the safety rules, not putting the goggles, not, uh, you know, uh, fastening your seat belts, uh, or that's one thing that's behaving. But if you watch people who don't do things or do things wrongly and do nothing about it, that's also teaching. That's also teaching your leader so what even if you keep a turn the blind eye that is a behavior don't see I, I didn't do anything i didn't i did nothing no you have done something you are and people will follow you yeah you are complicit you you are guilty so yeah. the same exactly when it comes to leading others what you do speaks volumes what you do speaks so loud i cannot hear what you say and this is what happens. So you are people are learning from you all the time. So what sort of things, let's talk about some examples of what sort of things people could be learning from you. As you said at the beginning, um, anything that goes under, uh, you know, what you say, what you do, or vice versa, what you don't say and what you don't do. In every situation, you are actually uh, uh, pinning an example for them and pinning a benchmark for them, a yardstick yes. that they will uh, follow or unfollow because the leader did this, the leader didn't do this. But when it comes to different industries, then, and we go to the details, then things, of course, become more uh, detailed, uh, whether in your office with your closest constituents or later, the bigger uh, majority of the workforce, when you walk down the uh, workshops, etc., everything actually is measured and done. So a tiny act of goodness towards one employee, everybody else is watching and wants to be part of that. Absolutely. So that would be a good example. Yeah. Absolutely. Even the tiniest of those examples is going to have is going to have an impact. Well said. Yeah, really good. Phoebe, what about maybe, you? Maybe. Yeah, I was just uh, trying to share one aspect. You know, uh, leadership can be perceived as good, bad, and ugly at uh, based on the actions that uh, at various points of time uh, people are uh, displaying in 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 a group setting in in front of people. And another aspect which I just want to maybe probe, <laughs> Graham, from uh, your experience, can you just take us uh, to your early days or some stories of some influential members who you consider as a great leader and how he has helped in your journey, developing you, helping you in that process? Wow. Wow. Thank you, uh, Phoebe. Look, there's, there's two that immediately come to mind. And one of them who is a dear uncle of mine he passed away two years ago three weeks before his 102nd birthday and i had the enormous wonderful pleasure of spending a lot of time with him from the time i was 13. Uh, every school holidays i worked with him on the family farm and uh, it was 
we could call it character building, we could call it physical body building because of the work that I was doing. But what I learned from him in that time stays with me today. I, I know that I certainly, he modelled the way, absolutely. Um, and uh, he was uh, someone who had a great impression on, on me. And he was with me, as I said, until three years ago when he passed away at the age of just short of 102. And and even on the, about, about two months before he passed away, when I, I called him, I used to call him every year on his birthday and every year at Christmas, and he was really still vibrant in his thinking. And, and that was very much a part of our relationship. The other person that I spent a lot of time with in my corporate world um, was when I was, uh, yeah, uh, this is a big reveal. I don't always need to talk about this, but for some of you, perhaps most of you don't know that I used to produce television drama, primetime television drama. And the man who was the, oh, you didn't know, didn't you know that, Muhammad? Uh, I have 450 yeah. hours of credit as a television, a produced television drama and a feature film. And the man who was the head of this, the company that I was working with, uh, his name is Hector Crawford. He was, a, he was a household name in Australia because of the pioneering work that he had done in setting up television, drama, firstly in the radio area, uh, radio programs, and then television drama. And I was blessed to be working in the company for about 17 years. Uh, and at a very early age, I was given the, the role of producing a new television series. Uh, and uh, that was when I had... Uh, I had between six and eight uh, direct reports, perhaps not, not eight, but certainly six direct reports and upwards of 80 people in the team overall. And at a very early early age, well, I was 29 when I had this responsibility. And one of the things that I found about him is that he absolutely empowered me. And, and that was that was such a gift to me to know that this man who has such a huge reputation from around the country and was respected enormously, uh, that, that I was in a situation where he absolutely trusted me and empowered me to do things and encouraged me. And, and I'm going, I thought, wow, this, I was, that's where I learned so much, I think, about, about leadership, uh, in, in, certainly in the corporate world and, and leading people. And it was, you know, it, I, I was, as I said, blessed to be in that situation uh, with someone who was iconic in Australia. Everybody in this, he was a household name in Australia. And the programs that I produced uh, went around the world. And as I said, I then produced a feature film. But he had, he gave, he trusted me. And, and that was really, I was the, oh my gosh, he trusts me. <laughs> so when I talk about trust as a, as a leader, you know, in the first practice of, of, of the leadership challenge, model the way, we know that in that values and living your values are really important. So if I am developing leaders because of working with them, whether they know I'm developing them consciously or whether I'm developing them because of what they're seeing in my behaviour, the first part of this is living my values. Because if I live my values, if I talk about my values, and and they can see that every day I'm saying something that's consistent with my values, the behaviours that I do are consistent with my values. They've got to do that as well because they think, I know that I trust this person because he or she is living their values. And, and I know that if they say this is a value, they live it. It builds credibility. And so I want to do that as well. Yeah, actually, you, uh, Graham, uh, made us all think of the people. Suddenly, all the people that made us who we are, yeah, right. helped us to become who we are, they came. Sorry, so sorry. as much, yeah, yeah, uh, as much as we want to attribute our success and career to the hard work and the qualifications and the things that we overcame, uh, and at the end of the day, without few people we know very well, we wouldn't have been here at, at the end of the day. Yeah. 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 Look, uh, here's a quick story. I remember we'd been set up to do something that involved uh, uh, filming a program either in Italy or Hong Kong. 
And it was kind of up to me to make the decision. And I'm mm -hmm. so one late afternoon, we were in the boardroom having a drink, and and this Hector said to me, "Well, what's going on with this particular thing?" And I said, "Well, we need to visit either both of Hong Kong and and uh, Italy and assess the situation and and make a decision." And he said, "Well, when when are you going to go?" And I said, "Well, when do you want me to go?" And he said, "Well, finish your drink." Oh, <laughs> uh, this was this is empowering. You know, he's saying, get on with it, right? Mm. If you go to Hong Kong and go to Rome, go and sort it out and make a decision. Wow, those sorts of things. So now that I've sparked, I hope, a thought in each of you, we'll talk about leaders that you learned from at an early age or even a later age. Mohammed, Phoebe, uh, Phoebe, you can go start. <laughs> yeah. So uh, thank you, Mohammed. So I I, I was just uh, uh, <laughs> reflecting at this moment, and uh, my father is coming to my mind. And uh, uh, you know, I, during my grade twelve days, you know, eleven grade twelve days, I was doing my physics, chemistry, math, and uh, unfortunately, my math and chemistry score were really really low. And I remember an incident in which my father was invited or called to the institute. Okay, your son is not uh, doing well in the, and his marks are low. And I'm feeling vulnerable at this moment. But uh, And this is, uh, your father came and he said, don't worry. Uh, he spoke to the teacher and later he said, don't worry. See how you can improve. You can do that, you know. So that was a very powerful word, which still resonates with me. And and I think uh, you can do that. That words yeah. empower yes. me in that process. And uh, uh, you know, it is a great uh, memory as well as uh, an empowering moment for me, which uh, which actually took away all my assumptions at that point of time, you know. So, so uh, that, that is something which is coming to my mind right now, Graham. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. This is the power of someone like your father or uh, someone who we look up to, someone as a, a leader who when we doubt or have concerns or we're feeling vulnerable as we talked last week or if we're not sure, and this person then says, you can. Oh. Yeah. You can. So that reassurance is powerful from someone who's, who is a leader or someone who we, we respect. And we exactly. then, the other part about this, we learn from that and then we pass that on to others because we know the impact that that behaviour has had on us. Exactly, right? exactly. And 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 also, um, I, I also want to mention one of my teacher in my college who uh, uh, was head of the department. His name is Dr. A. A. Baby, head of the Department of Economics at that time in St. Thomas College in Pritchard. And uh, he said uh, this, you know, you know, you, you are not determined by your marks. It is by your actions. <laughs> and and, and uh, that, that was another uh, 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 moment of uh, inspiration and, and, and invitation to us to experiment and explore what is outside. And I think still I feel, you know, a, a word he says, uh, Phoebe, you are enterprising bringing in different ideas and thoughts. And I think that is now, even now, inspiring me to do more. <laughs> and that. Uh, this is determined by your great. actions, by your behaviors. That's really powerful. That's really good. Mohammed. I want to take, uh, I want to take uh, that line uh, from uh, Graham, pass this thing to others, like empowering leaders, because you were empowered by a leader, he made he empowered you as a leader. You pass this to others. So immediately, I remember the very recent outdoor team building I did for a company, ninety leaders. But guess who are the five leaders I was focusing on? The five interns I hired them to help me co-facilitate, and I don't know uh, unintentionally or. Un, I mean, I mean, unknowingly, I was focusing on the five interns and the organizer noticed. He said, you have 90 people to encourage, motivate, 
train and the team building, but your focus was on the five people we hired to run the show, the young interns. I said, yeah, I did that. I don't know where this comf- comes from. But now with your story and Phoebe's story, uh, it took me to a day when Ron McKinnon, who was the safety manager, I was only one year into safety, so I was a very, you know, uh, rookie, like a rookie. Suddenly he said, "We are doing. I am doing an out, uh, a breakout uh, uh, safety seminar for the top executives of the company. Would you like to join me? I said, I will join. No, as an instructor. No, you're kidding me, Ron. I'm, I'm so new. He said, no, you're going to deliver with me, all right? One of the modules, six modules, you will deliver. Anyone else? No, only you. And all his time, the focus was on me. So you feel like he has put up all this show for you instead of we are putting a show for the audience. This is how a leader makes you feel that you are the center of his attention, not the third. And guess what? It was so powerful. So um, uh, do, uh, while you are busy with all your work, business, etc., the people around you are looking at you, up to you. Don't forget to look at them and don't push them away. Oh, I'm busy. Okay, later. We can talk about this later. No, it's exactly the right time while you're doing things where they will learn the most. They learn from you and your actions. They yeah. will, you do something that's really good. The, internally, they think, oh, I like that. Uh, and then there's an opportunity for them to share that. So I'm I'm gonna there can be. So let me just come back to we'll come to a couple of the leadership challenge five, the five practices of exemplary leadership. In terms of developing leaders, so let's just say as a leader, I'm gonna challenge someone or ask someone, is there a better way of doing this? You did a great job with that, but is there another way? And if they think about it and think, um, actually, we could do it. Okay, great. Let's do that next time. The trickle-down effect of that surely is in another situation when they are with someone, they are going to say what I've said. Is there a better way of you doing that? I I don't know. So this is about developing leaders. And the next one, of course, is enable others to act. So if I say to someone, there's a really good chance that you're going to do a great job on this and I'm going to support you, you go all the way. What do you need from me to help you make this happen? Oh, wow. Well, the other line that we can use is there's only one person stopping you achieving great success, and that's not me. And they then usually realise that it's them. So you're giving them the, the, the encouragement to do this. So what do they then do because of the result of this? They, this is then passed by them to others. And it's the same with the fifth practice, encourage the heart, when people are given encouragement. I'm going to tell a, a quick story, and this is probably this is only because you've prompted my recollection of my early experience. And I, I will confess that I'm, I don't think I've ever told this story um, because I rarely ever talk about my television um work it, it's it's except when it comes to leadership and that's only occasionally so here's what happened and this is directly related to encourage the heart so at the end of production of one particular series that i was working on it was i think it went only went for um uh, i can't remember how many hours but it was it was a short run maybe 26 hours it was a difficult program to put together i actually came on board as producer, the day production started. So I'd had no chance to put things in place to make it hopefully more successful. So I was brought in absolutely at the last minute as the the race was starting. And it was difficult. It was problematic. We had issues along the way and I worked really hard to to make this as successful as I could. And then it was was cancelled. And at the end of the production, Always in television or film or even theatre, we have what, what's called a wrap party. We're wrapping it up. It's finished. We're all to get together, getting together and saying, hey, great job. And, you know, wasn't it good fun working together? 
And the man that I've mentioned, Hector Crawford, uh, was always invited to these events because these were part of his company. Of course, he would be invited. And always he made a speech. And there might have been, I don't know, 100 people in the room. I don't know. It was around about that number. And in his speech that he's making, he said, and there's one person who made such a huge difference, one person to do, 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 and one person, and I'm thinking, who is this one person? <laughs> and he said, and that one person is Graham Moore. Ah, wow. It was a, obviously it was a total surprise. Did it touch my heart? Absolutely. I was doing my job to make this program successful, it was long hours, it was hard work, and we, we didn't quite get the result that we wanted. But he recognised in front of everybody else, all the people who were part of my team, all 80 or however many people and, and more, and I would hope that the people who were in that room at the time recognised the impact of what he had just done. And when there's an opportunity for them to pass this on and to recognise the good work that others have done, they will pass that on as well. I guess that that's one of the examples of where I received encouragement, where my heart was encouraged, that it made such an impact on me because it was absolutely genuine, a totally, and a surprise. That's probably one of the reasons why I absolutely know the impact of encouraging the heart. Enough of my stories. Phoebe. Beautiful. No, no, actually, stories uh, make sense of uh, the way we live and who we are. In fact, you know, many of us um, overlook the fact that we might not end up achieving the outcome of that specific deal or specific event or any part of the production or business that is uh, under many variables. But the one thing that is for sure we can win is the people who are working with us on this. Whether we succeed or fail in that project, our squad, we have them as, you know, the uh, the golden asset that we can develop. Hey, guys, we didn't uh, achieve exactly what we were up to, but you did a freaking good job everyone all right yeah. and we can go to the learning stages later but we should build these these people that's for that's a guarantee we should not overlook and and the people who are on this production team were really determined to make it work uh mm -hmm. i'm really pleased that they they were as committed or more so than than i was and i was disappointed for them when we had to can it was cancelled and and in fact when it was cancelled some of them said Graham, we are going to prove to the decision makers, the ones who cancel it, that they were wrong, which was another way of saying we are going to work harder to get a better yeah, result rather than saying, oh, well, we give up. You know, they were so this is because they were committed to, to the process. So there you go. There you go. And it's happening even in uh, very recently. You know, I learned leadership, the leadership challenge. I learned many leadership principles, but the leadership challenge, I don't know why I stuck to for long, not because I became a facilitator, but even when everybody was has gone home, okay, and they took the materials, etc., with the course in Bahrain, and then I was given very special attention by a person who was the master facilitator, and he knows himself because he's in the picture already in this scene. And by follow up with the calls, where did you go? And guess guess what? He was not nice all the time. He was challenging me all the time, which exactly what we want if we are serious about learning. We don't want only only all this pat pat on the back. And now I am very privileged to be sharing with him the scene. So I am an eyewitness of what this man is talking about, Graham Moore. I am an eyewitness. Just no, for the record, I, sorry, Graham, I surprised you. That's a third story, <laughs> but just for the record. But listen, yeah, I, I, sec I, I second that. And, uh, you know, uh, in my journey in transition, he, he he's a pillar of support and he's uh, someone who is uh, modeling the way and uh, challenging the process, you know, encouraging the heart. And, and uh, uh, 
you, you know, as a coach, uh, so I, I see these conversation as a coaching conversation. So thank you, Graham, for uh, taking us in this journey, in this process. Thank you. Can I, thank you so much. Can I round it off by saying we started with the question of leaders developing leaders. And it happens in the ways that we've, I guess we've talked about. Uh, the fact that it's not just always saying wonderful things, but it's challenging people. It's the modelling of behaviour. It's our attitude, and it's the, the 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 what we do as as leaders to help others learn from our behaviours, and that they become great leaders. I have a doubt and a question. Uh, since we are at this stage, if I may, sure. Yeah, the leaders will say, "Okay, I am a leader. I accept that." Okay. And also I'm managing. But now you want to me, you want me to become also a coach for my people. I mean, taking care of each one of them, their struggles and uplift them. I don't have that coaching skills. I heard this several times. So how uh, are we going to go about this, uh, Graham and Phoebe? I am going to make a suggestion. What you've just mm -hmm. said is really so important. And I, I'm going to make a suggestion that next week, why don't we talk then about leaders coaching, right? It is an important part of what leaders should be doing. And so often leaders think, oh, I can't do that. Uh, mm, I can't mm, mm, just get on with it. No, it's important and it's not hard to do. And I've got a, what I call a five-minute coaching process which I know is is impactful and important and gets great results, but it is a critical yeah. behaviour that that leaders sh should be doing, right? And sometimes that coaching is is um, not in a formal sense, uh, but it still has great results. So, are you okay with me asking if we can postpone that and spend a lot more time on it next week? Yeah, it, it is a yeah. whole subject. And they say teachers, coaches, we are not all those. And the com our organization doesn't pay us for this, you know. But, uh, yeah, uh, so next week we are promising everyone that this will, will be the, the subject. Thank you. Aren't you excited, yeah. Phoebe? Excited. Huh? It is a fascinating topic. <laughs> I yeah. just want to jump into that conversation without a break. <laughs> but see you <laughs> next time. Right. <laughs> Wait until next week. Hold it there, Phoebe. Yeah. yeah. It is an important discussion. It really is. Gentlemen, our time, I think, is pretty well up. We've, we, I'm, I hope that we've had value discussion. Uh, we've discussed some important areas, and I hope that the people who are with us have learned a few things today. And as we always say, if you want to contact us or give your opinions or your responses, we would welcome that. And we will be back again next week. So, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you, Phoebe. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next week. See you. Great. Have a great week ahead.